In chapter 8, we're going to be talking about two types of probability distributions. Uh, we've already talked about one type of probability distribution this year so far, and that's the normal distribution. Uh, but in this chapter, we're going to focus on two new types. One's called the binomial distribution, which is our focus for the first section. And then in the second section of the chapter, we'll talk about the geometric distribution. So in this video, we're going to introduce uh, the idea of the binomial distribution. In order for a uh, situation to be considered uh, to be in the binomial setting, there are a few requirements that have to be satisfied. The first requirement is that each observation has to fall into one of two categories. We'll typically call these two categories success and failure. Uh, so for instance, if we want to run, um, if we want to look at the probability of tossing a coin, uh, or tossing heads on a coin um, out of maybe 10 trials. Of course, we know that that's just one half. Uh, but if um, our success means that we, or if we're calling tossing a tail a success, then that means the other outcome, tossing a head, it would be considered failure. So again, you've got, you have to have one of, each observation has to fall into one of two categories success or failure, uh, but don't be thrown off. It, just because we're calling it success and failure doesn't necessarily mean that the outcome, uh, a successful outcome is necessarily a positive thing and a f an outcome of a failure is necessarily a negative thing. Uh, we just use those terms success and failure uh, just by convention because that makes it easy to distinguish between uh, the two possible outcomes. The second requirement for a binomial setting so there has to be a fixed number of observations, and we'll commonly denote this number of observations as n. Uh, so if you have a situation uh, that goes on indefinitely, then you can't use the binomial setting uh, to calculate any sort of probabilities. We have to know exactly how many trials or how many observations we're taking a look at in order to use a binomial distribution. Requirement number three is that the observations have to be independent. And we've talked about independence uh, quite a bit already this year. That just means that the outcome of any one observation uh, cannot affect the outcome of any of the other observations. The fourth and final requirement uh, is that the probability of success, which we'll denote with the letter P, has to be the same for each of our observations. So if your probability of success is changing from trial to trial, then that is not a binomial setting. But as long as it stays consistent uh, each time you run a trial or each time you observe uh, a situation, uh, then you can say, or potentially can say, that you have a binomial setting. So if the four requirements for a binomial setting are satisfied, that means then that you are looking at a binomial random variable. So let's say that we're going to use x to represent that random variable. If we're looking at a binomial random variable, then x represents the count of the number of successes. So then once we know uh, what x represents, the number of times that our uh, experiment is successful, uh, then we can create the binomial distribution that is going to be associated with this random variable x. Uh, if you remember the notation for normal distributions, uh, we sometimes use that capital N and we would, in parentheses, identify the mean of the distribution and the standard deviation. We're going to use some similar notation for binomial distributions. We'll use a capital B for binomial, of course. Uh, but instead of identifying the mean and the standard deviation uh, in our notation, we will instead uh, give N, which again is the number of observations that we're going to take, and P, which is the probability of success for each observation. Once you know the values for n and p, and you know that you're dealing with a binomial random variable, you can then create a probability distribution that will tell you exactly what the probability is for each possible value of x. 
we'll do some examples in uh, subsequent videos, uh, but let me just explain something or give you a quick example here. Let's say that we are looking at um, the probability uh, that we will roll a five on a six-sided die, and we're going to roll our die uh, four times. So then the number of successes that we could have, if we're, again, we're just interested in whether or not we roll a five, the number of successes out of four rolls would be zero successes through four successes. And then once we talk about um, how we calculate the various probabilities, which we'll do in the next video, then you could create the probability distribution uh, for that binomial random variable. Again, where x is the number of successes, so we could have 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 successes. And then, like I said, in the next video we'll talk about how to calculate the associated probabilities for each of those uh, possible outcomes.